always had this fascination for fighting video games. I would love inviting my friends over and putting on a game and going to the select character screen and picking out my favorite character to go up against my friend's favorite characters. Now I remember I have fond memories of going up to my cousin's house and playing uh, some fighting games as well. And of course, the two games we were going back and forth were, of course, Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Today I'm going to be talking about one of those movies that spawned from those video games that we loved so much. Of course, I'm going to be talking about the Mortal Kombat film that came out in 1995, directed by Paul W.S. Anderson. Hey everybody, my name is Adam of Almost Sideways, a place for movie conversations. If you love conversations like this, make sure you smash that subscribe or get over here to the subscribe button and let's talk about movies in the comments section. I know that was super kind of cheesy, but bear with me, folks. I'm a movie fan. Anyway, so to get myself in excited for the brand new HBO Max slash movie theater experience of Mortal Kombat 2021, I wanted to go back and look at the 90, 1990s version. I didn't check out Annihilation because I, I don't have fond memories of that film. But for whatever reason, I kind of like a nostalgic um, memory of this 1995 Mortal Kombat. And of course, I wanted to not just dive into the movie, but I also do have the Super Nintendo video game here. Uh, so I wanted to dive into this game and play a little bit uh, and realize how rusty I truly am. Yeah, so I had to bust out the old Super Nintendo and I played a little bit. And here's some footage that I filmed of me playing. I, I, I do, None of the controllers came back to me, however, but I do have some fond memories playing with my cousins with this game. And I remember not being able to own Mortal Kombat. Um, as a Super Nintendo owner, I was kind of bummed about that because it's one of those hot topic games that I remember growing up that remembering uh, the news articles because the game came out in 1992 and there was a different version of the game where you can have blood and stuff. And I remember the Sega has it and I eventually we'll get my copy of that. But right now, the, the Mortal Kombat for Super Nintendo is kind of what we got now and it's, it's fun. I still remember playing as a kid and maybe not being as good, uh, probably a little better than I am right now, of course, but it brings back those nostalgic feels of those seeing these iconic characters uh, and hearing their, uh, seeing their fatalities on screen and watching them uh, say their catchphrases or whatnot and hearing fights and finish him and all these awesome fun things that we get to see in the game. And of course that's the transition into the, the movie from 1995. Now I recently had just rewatched it, like I said, for anticipation of the move, the new latest movie, and I gotta say this movie is pretty dang '90s. It's super cheesy, but there was some nostalgic charm to it. Video game movies haven't been known to be the grandest of films, but this one has kind of truly stood the test of time, being one of the earlier adaptions. That's the not the first video game movie for video game adaptation to the big screen, but one of the ones that kind of set the bar and it didn't really set it too high, mind you, especially looking back with uh what what is that like almost like 20 year lens or 25 year lens now. But there is something that they were doing right with this one. It does kind of capture some of the feel of these characters now granted do the uh, do the characters on screen portray what you envision them being from the video game probably not i definitely don't remember some of these fight sequences and we'll get into some of those things i think they kind of fall into gripes but i gotta say th there was something really cool when you saw Sub-Zero walk out and Scorpion walk out on the screen at the first time. And even characters like Johnny Cage uh, pop up and uh, Sonya Blade. These guys are pretty much iconic characters. And I, you know, I realized watching this one that I kind of really dug Sonya Blade in this film. So the synopsis is when Lord Raiden handpicks three martial arts ex experts, Federal Agent Sonya Blade, played by Bridget Wilson, and Sh Shaolin Monk Liu Kang played by Robin Sow, and action movie sensation Johnny Cage, played by Lyndon Ashby, and uh, and mentors them. After intense training, Raiden transports them to the, the outer world, the site of the interdimensional <laughs> fighting tournament. There, the three humans must defeat the demonic warriors of the evil Shang Tsung, uh, or allow Tsung to take over the Earth. 
Now I said, this is directed by Paul W S Anderson. It came out in 1995 with a box office uh, total of 122 million dollars. That's actually a pretty good haul for being in the 90s. I'm not quite sure how that. Uh, what's the kind of the how it how much money it would make now, but with a budget about 20 million US uh, 20 million dollars, that's actually pretty dang good. Now, if we look at Paul W.S. Anderson's filmography up to this point, he has about 17 films that he has directed. And it's crazy. He has, you can look at it right here on IMDb and see that he has a strange fascination with video game movies. His latest ad adaptation came out in 2020, starring me and Jolovich, uh, Monster Hunter. Didn't see that movie. Didn't look really. I didn't hear great things about it. But we also see he's directed a bunch of the Resident Evil movies. Has Pompeii, which, yeah, disaster kind of cheese, I guess. And uh, DOA, Alien vs. Predator, the first one. I actually kind of enjoy that film for what it, what it is. Uh, and then also have been Horizons, probably his most uh, notable thing as well. And then, of course, Mortal Kombat. You know, not being a, a huge Mortal Kombat extra expert, mind you, I, I'm a fan of the games, but don't know all the, the mythology of, that surrounds the game with the characters as well. I'm relatively going into, I would say, as my, a novice fan of this movie. So I'm just basing it of what I see and what I personally enjoy. So if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you guys leave me a comment in the comment section of what, what you guys personally feel about these characters. So one of the most iconic characters to this game, and we'll start off with Lord Raiden. He's played by Christopher Lambert. Now, when I picture Lord Raiden, I do not picture this actor here. I thought he, I thought I always pictured Lord Raiden with like maybe a bit deeper voice for whatever reason. And he just kind of has a very chill demeanor about him. And I, he's one of my least favorite performances in this movie. And it's not like it's horrible. It is kind of maybe has a little bit of cheese to it, but it's just one of those ones that doesn't really catch my attention. So it, it, it's kind of a bummer for me because I, Raiden is one of the, my favorite characters from when I play him on the video game. Uh, so with his character, I'm not really like just blown away by his performance. One of my favorite ones, of course, is Liu Kang, which is played by Robin Zhao. I thought he did really good in this movie. He's definitely a very believable, obviously, martial arts fighter. He definitely is one of the big leads in this film. And it's really cool to see him come out, this character, uh, Liu Kang, come out and basically uh, try to get revenge on his the death of his brother in this film. And but that was very cool and fascinating. And it, the, so he has kind of a purpose and he's driven to kind of seek this revenge and try to win back like his kind of family honor in a way. And I thought that was a very cool little way they told this story, gave him a little bit more personal backstory. And, and then also along with the other characters, Sonya Blade, who is portrayed by, Bridget Will Wilson Samp uh, Sampras, which I actually really enjoyed uh, Sonya Blade in here. I thought she, if this was a bigger, uh, more popular franchise, we could have seen Sonya Blade be one of the big 90s star action female stars of the 90s, maybe of all time, maybe not that much, but I'm thinking like Sonya Blade is a pretty badass. And of course, I, I do know that uh, Ronda Rousey does voice her in the latest Mortal Kombat game. So it just proves that uh, this character is a total badass. And I thought... Uh, uh, Bridget Wilson did a really good job in this uh, this role here. I thought she was very believable. I did not like when after she got captured, she came back with kind of like frizzy hair and she kind of looked had more uh, fem uh, femi femininity to her. And kind of, she's still a badass, but just not that kind of straight arrow, straight uh, straight lace type of uh, combat uh, character that she was set up so perfectly in the, the beginning half of the film. And of course, we had Johnny Cage played by Lyndon Ashby. Johnny Cage is kind of a cheese ball because he's an action star. He's basically there to prove that he is not a joke. He's not a hack. He's not a fake. And so he has something to prove in this tournament too. And he actually has a, the hardest matchup, I feel, in the first round. You're taking on Scorpion, one of the most iconic characters in the video game and all of the character. When you think Mortal Kombat, you're re really thinking two characters. You're thinking Sub-Zero and you're thinking Scorpion. So it's kind of ballsy for the very first fight that Johnny Cage has up go to go up against Scorpion and actually defeat him. It's really weird. <laughs> and I, I kind of, at the, at the same time, it's like, I get that move. It's a ballsy move. I don't like it, and here's why. Because I think Scorpion needed to have some fights in this, a little bit more uh, fights. And granted, he it's kind of cheesy with his like his Scorpion thing comes out. It looks really bad '90s graphics. I'm hopefully they update that in the uh, the latest film. 
uh, but he needed to see like these main characters have some fights against some maybe lesser characters and build the the villains up as well to fight when they actually clash against these three heroes that you're pushing so heavily. Uh, I thought it was kind of just a bummer for Scorpion fans out there that he lost in the first round. Nothing wrong with Johnny Cage here, but it's just it's a bummer. It's Scorpion, one of my favorites as well, and he loses. So uh, we also see uh, and later on in the match we see Liu Kang fight up Sub Zero. I thought that was a fairly cool fight. And uh, Sonya Blade also does a really great job here as well. Uh, they do introduce Grogu in the movie, and it's definitely kind of animatronic. Uh, Kind of really cheesy when he's on. He's a very menacing character in the game, and one of those uh, characters that are really badass. I, if you like Grogu, definitely check out the Mortal Kombat Scorpion's Revenge movie. He has some pretty cool fight sequences in there. And but overall, Grogu is. Uh, I think he's done really well here. I think he gets taken out a little easier than I would like him to do. Uh, but I'm not maybe nitpicking the film a little bit more because this in, in the long run, this is not you're not going to watch like an award winning film here. You're watching this for some 90s cheese, uh, some fun martial arts film and maybe some nostalgicness to it. If you're a big fan of the video game, maybe even this movie from the 90s. Now, my big takeaway from this movie is that I actually I kind of enjoy it. It's you know, it's not a perfect film, but it's kind of that. One of my friends here on YouTube, he basically says it's like Taco Bell. It's not good for you, but it's it's easily digestible. You can you can eat it and just enjoy it. And that's kind of what this movie is. It's not a perfect film by any means, but it's one of those movies that I want to put on uh, maybe a couple times a year uh, if I'm feeling in the mood. Just have some fun with it, you know. Just I accept what it is and maybe have, just have my nostalgia kind of put me put my nostalgia goggles on for a little bit and just have some fun with the movie. And brings me back to being a kid playing the game and. I've been watching the movie too. So anyway, my overall grade for Mortal Kombat, I'm probably going to, if I'm being really honest, it's probably like a two, 2.5 rated film. And most of that has to do with the nostalgia, uh, but it's a fun movie nonetheless. And I want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you guys think about Mortal Kombat? Do you guys like it? Do you not like it? Let me know down there and we'll have a good fun conversation. If this is your first time to Almost Sideways, welcome. My name is Adam. Once again, I'm one of the hosts here of Almost Sideways. We'd love talking about movies and we'd love for you to join the conversation. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Whatever you may do, just hit that like, that subscribe, and join the conversation. Until next time, see you later.